Alma Mater Rudolfina, founded on the 12th of March, 1365, by Rudolf IV, Duke of Austria, with the approval of Pope Urban V, in 1384 renewed by Albert III, Duke of Austria, with the theological faculty, by the authority of Pope Urban VI. In 1385, it gave itself its first law. That's the start of the Latin text inscribed in the cartouche above the rector's plaques. We'd now like to tell you about the most important reforms of the university that took place between the 16th and 18th centuries under emperors Ferdinand I, Ferdinand II and Maria Theresia. And of course we'll mention the role of Emperor Franz Josef during whose reign this ornate new building was opened in 1884. Today we find the names of 871 rectors of the University of Vienna on the memorial plaques made of red marble. They include many well-known personalities. In the centuries of its history, the University of Vienna underwent many changes. For a long time, the church and the rulers of the land exerted considerable influence. However, the election of the rectors was always an autonomous event, although subject to certain rules. In the second half of the 18th century, numerous university reforms were carried out under Maria Theresia and Joseph II. For example, the university was transformed into a state institution, thereby losing its independence despite its great academic successes. After the university reforms, which resulted from the Viennese Revolution of 1848, the alma mater developed into a place of greater academic freedom. It had secured freedoms of teaching and learning according to Wilhelm von Humboldt's concept which was based on the unity of teaching and research. After the 1873 law on the organisation of the university administration, rectors could only be selected from among the active members of the faculty. In the ensuing decades up to the First World War, the alma mater Rudolfina experienced the greatest upswing in its history. The Wiener Schule, or Vienna School, became world famous in many disciplines until World War I and the end of the monarchy cut off Viennese scholars from their international contacts for some time. The Nazi era left terrible traces. While a large contingent of students and teaching staff sympathised with the Nazis early on, nearly half the professors and more than 2,000 students had to flee the country or were deported. It was an exodus of learning and scholarship. Following the post-war reconstruction years, the University Organisation Act of 1975 addressed demands of the student movement for greater democratisation of the university. Since then, non-academic staff, non-professorial academic staff and students have been included in the decision-making process to a certain extent. The rapid development of the sciences in the course of the 20th century led to an increasing number of disciplines and, since the 1970s, a sharp rise in the number of students. Today, the University of Vienna has 15 faculties based in three centres and more than 75,000 students. In 2004, the University of Vienna again became an autonomous body and was vested with full legal rights. Since then, the university has administrative sovereignty in matters related to its staff and budget. This palatial building continues to be the historical centre of the alma mater Rudolfina. Although the university is distributed throughout several different buildings, the main building still contains the university administration, the library, lecture halls, the admissions department, the ceremonial rooms, numerous institutes, as well as administrative departments. The rector's plaque is a symbol of the university's independence and care for tradition. It stands for the uninterrupted importance of the University of Vienna since its founding. <laughs>